Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. We're live on TV3. And for the past two weeks, we've been talking about education in the country. Remember, you know, the CSSBS crisis, SSS, um, you know, issues as well. And also the fact that a lot of students, um, you know, have been enrolled into the senior secondary school. Um, and I think it's starting. It should have started by now. And so we've been looking forward to speaking to the Deputy Minister of Education for a while now. He was in the UK um, just around the time we we're hoping to speak to him. But he's finally back and he joins me here and to help me say good morning to Dr. Yao Osei Educhum, also the MP for Busumchi um, constituency in the Ashanti region. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How was your trip? Trip was excellent. Okay. Trip was excellent. People mm. were very happy to see me and also after my speech they were yeah. very grateful that I came. So. Oh, that's nice. So your speech was, was on inclusive education? Inclusive education. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's all very exciting yeah. to look at inclusive education from the perspective of the Western world where now they be able to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. If you go to America, there's something a legislation called Title One. One, okay. And Title One, poor neighbor schools in poor neighborhoods get more funding from the government uh, so that they can better educate their children. Okay. So they are bridging the gap through various legislative uh, activities. Uh, uh, then you come to us. Um, so in those jurisdictions, what they are focused on is now for the uh, physically challenged, the learning okay. is intellectually disabled, uh. which we call the mild to moderate learning disability. Uh -huh. So you have a children sitting in front of you in a classroom mm -hmm. and they can't grasp what you are teaching them. Uh -huh. And you don't just tell them that they are dumb and they don't know what they are doing. Exactly. You assess them. So mm. learning intellectual disability, mild to moderate, is hidden in plain sight. So the child has a learning disability, but yeah. we don't know. Uh. So in the Western world, their inclusive education frontier is at that level. Okay. Where they are looking at how can we include the physically challenged, the intellectually disabled, and make sure they are part of the education system. Then you come to us, and that's what I was explaining to them in Oxford, uh, that to us, the concept of inclusive education has not got, got into, into that, that level. frontier. Yeah. Even though we need to tackle that, but as we tackle the intellectual disability issues and the physical challenge issues, uh -huh. we shouldn't forget that we have also, as a developing nation, serious inclusiveness issues, which is Down between here. the rich and the poor, the rural, mm. urban, the jungle. And then one area is the concept of inner city, yeah. uh, where you go to Jamestown, Chalk, other places where yeah. you really have to lift them up and get them to become part of what you do. Even language mm -hmm. deficiencies where limited English proficient you go to high schools and there are some who come there and they are fluent in English. Uh, and then you have those who come there and they are not. Yeah. That is a major issue where you have to talk about inclusion. Because if that child coming from a disadvantaged background that mm. cannot speak English is not supported, what it means is that they are not getting access to the content in social in studies social. and yeah. English and yeah. science and all the other subject areas. Mm. So our inclusion agenda in developing countries should also look at how do we ensure that we enable the children to acquire the language? And there's a difference between language learning and language acquisition. Okay, okay, you see, all right. Language acquisition is the full immersion mm. into the language in such a way that you don't care about the grammar, the mm. nouns and the verbs, no. You allow the children to just speak it. And then you have to have what we call comprehensive output. Okay. Uh, uh, input where you demonstrate to the child what you are what saying and saying. what it okay. means. Okay. And in those environments where ch ch children acquire language, just like they do at home. Mm. You see, if you begin to speak to your child, do you teach them grammar? Mm. Your language. Yeah. By the time you know they pick up on they your tree, up, your exactly. gun, or your ever, and, yeah. and they're moving on, right? Mm. When they go into the classroom, in order for that to happen, the researchers are like crash nice, talking about there should be zero anxiety. Mm. for the children to acquire the language. Okay. So okay. when you start caning the kids, you've lost it. They are not acquiring the language. So you are against... Yeah, you're going against language acquisition. Okay. And there's a difference between that, that and is. language learning. We'll so, have more so time for that conversation <laughs> much later. I believe that there's a lot to discuss on that. Yes. But let's talk about our free SHS uh, policy. Can you educate us a little more on the current situation? The free S yeah. SHS on track... Mm. Um, there were issues as the minister have done press conference yes. on. He's explained it. 
mm. many times over and over. It's a bump in the road. Yeah. Uh, but the, the present vision is on course. Okay. Um, it's, it's being done in a yeah. way to ensure that there's equity. Okay. And also you don't do just equity, but also ensure there's quality. Mm. And you don't do quality just by itself. You ensure there's access. Yeah. You know, so, so when you talk about the three most important things in education, you have to always look at access. Okay. Then after access, you look at quality. Mm. And then within the quality, don't forget about your equity. Mm. And then you have to look at relevance. Definitely. These are the three most important things. So, so equity, quality, and relevance, and relevance of your education system. Okay. This is what transforms countries. Yeah, uh, definitely. Through, through education. Okay. So access, we are doing it through Frisner High School, uh -huh. making sure we use double track as a strategy to bring in more students. So that solves your access issues. Mm. Okay. When it comes to placement, placement is just a small piece of the puzzle. But that has yeah, created because, a lot of confusion. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's a bump in the road. That that is not. You, you seem to, to see it as a very is, casual. No, it's not casual. Thing. It's not casual. Mm. But we have to chill. We have to relax and solve the problem. Parents are not relaxed. They're I know, worried. I know. Their they parents are, worried, are crying. But I want to assure them: the president brought free senior high school to ensure that every child goes to school. If you're a parent, my message to you this morning is okay. that without you and your child, there will be no school. Okay. Without schools, there will be no Ministry of Education. Uh. So the Ministry of Education is focused on solving concerns uh. of parents. Okay. It may not be as fast as they want it, but it doesn't mean that Ministry of Education, I think Minister have said, has so, many said so much about it. We have it. to make sure that every child in school and... and, and um, every child has an opportunity uh. because the president have said it very well and that is his equity uh, uh issue that he always talk about he says that i don't know mm -hmm. the child who is going to bring the invention that will transform the, this nation and transform our world uh. and therefore make sure every that every child. child has an opportunity to go because that child that we leave behind may be the child that God has given a great talent to to change the fortunes of this country. Which it, is a great thing. Yeah so, yeah, so what it means is that when it comes to placement, any other activity, we have to do our best to make sure if they are challenging, we'll solve them. Okay. To make sure that we don't leave out that child that the president so eloquently talked about. Yeah. Because if we leave that child out, my future will be different, yours will be different. It took just okay. one person, Bill Gates, to create a fortune Small. for America. Yeah. So, so I want everyone to know that the president's focus is very clear. Mm. He wants to make sure that every child has an opportunity. And we are not going to do anything that will take that opportunity mm. to that child hidden somewhere that he so eloquently talks about. So I want to assure you, the minister has said it many times. Mm. Uh, I was not here. Yeah, you uh, were on his, your trip. Yeah, yes. He led the effort with the team. They've done an excellent job. Mm. And they are going to continue to make sure that we fulfill the mandate of the president. They have it's, been, it's not my mandate, yeah. but the president's mandate to make sure, sure that every child uh, who has qualified is not left behind. There have been allegations of, you know, sabotage um, of the SHS placements. I, I was not here. Uh -huh. uh, what do you much, make of uh, it? No, I mean, I, I, I have not been brief about that. <laughs> you, you're all not that, aware all of that, it? All that I know is that the minister has said that he's the minister. Uh -huh. and, um, but then the ministry they, they came under a lot of fire from the public after that comment because people were worried. Parents were worried. We want a solution to a problem. And, you know, the minister comes all, out and all, says all that, that there are some that, people behind all it. That, all that I'll tell you is this. Mm -hmm. Whether people, um, wherever we say, the most important commitment is that the children will go to school. Mm -hmm. And the president wants the children to go to school. So every other thing, all that I'm saying, and I'll keep on saying, mm -hmm. is that the commitment of the president remains the same. Okay. Make sure that every child who qualifies is in school. Mm. And that is what we are focused on. Okay. Um, other things are processes, but I'm interested in the outcome. The outcome is what I envisage always mm. that the son of Openin Kojo Mensa from Bontefufu will have we'll opportunity also have the opportunity to go. 
Okay. And he should not be stopped from going because of glitches. Yeah. We have to make sure that every child gets the opportunity to go. And I think that is the most important All thing right. in this discussion. So about 1.3 uh, million children have gotten the opportunity or will get the opportunity um, to it, it's be projected. part of... That's I think we said about. the minimum of... Yeah, um, yeah about, we said about... Yeah. 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 Because of we haven't finished the, uh, this, this. It, it seems like a large number and quite an expensive one as well. I know that there have been some um, ways of funding. There's been APFA, uh, about 90% of APFA has been injected into the education as well. And previously, about what, 800 million was spent on free SHS. Now, if we're getting 1.3 million children or about 1.3 million mm. children entering, that increases the number or the amount to about 2.8 million. How are we going to be able to fund? 2.8 billion pounds. It's, it's a yeah. great opportunity. Uh -huh. And that's what I tell people all the time. Uh -huh. You see, you have to look at what am I getting from this. Okay. I'm able to spend money on this, and I'm sure you spend money on your beautiful uh, suit. And, and, uh, yeah. Because Definitely. it's important to you. Right? Okay. It's important to you to come out here and be presentable. Uh -huh. So there are certain things that you say, how am I going to do this? And I tell people all the time. When it comes to individuals, we are constrained, of course. Uh -huh. Government may also be constrained. But what I've seen over the years is that governments are able to do what they really want to do if it's in the best interest of the people. Uh -huh. So it's us as a people who are going to demand from the government that come out with innovation and come up with strategies that will enable us to do this. Yeah. So I don't want to cut the government's a slack by saying that, oh, government is too much and how are you going to be? No. No, but I'm we going should to, be I'm concerned. Going to, no, no. Let me tell you. Okay. The concern should be, Mr. Government, come up with innovation, make sure this is done. Because it's so important to the fortunes of this nation. Uh -huh. If we communicate that way, we are putting the challenge to the government and saying, come up with innovation, make sure this is done. Because if we don't do this, we're not going to develop. Look at the Co South Koreans. Uh -huh. I've talked about their story. 16 years ago, our per capita income was $189. Okay. This was 158 uh -huh. And look at where they are. And all the economists of the world in the 60s were saying that Africa would develop faster than Asia. Mm. And that Asians will struggle to develop because of lack of resources. Okay. Then you, f 60 years fast forward, they are way ahead of us because they took education seriously, knowing that they didn't have resources. Mm. They put resources into education when they have little. Okay. And as a result of that, uh, painstaking efforts to transform the education system. You go to South Korea now, and they have a gross tertiary enrollment ratio of 93.6. That uh -huh. is, if you take the youth between 18 and 23, the 93.6% uh, are in tertiary or have yeah. graduated from tertiary. You come to us and it's 16%, 16.19. Uh. And, and all the research that's out there shows that if your gross tertiary enrollment ratio do not hit 40% plus, you don't talk about development. Okay. So the bottom line is this. Knowing that we're in a knowledge economy and we're moving into the fourth industrial revolution where no nation can develop without education, my charge to the government or any government for that matter will be fine away. So we shouldn't be concerned about where the money is coming from. We should only be concerned about the success innovation. of the innovation. Fine, innovative way to do it. Let me okay. tell you. 20 years, uh, a few years back, it was projected that it would take 20 years for us to do free snare high school. Uh -huh. There's this book by a Brooklyn institution called Leapfrogging Inequality. Uh -huh. And they've said that if developing countries do not find innovative approaches to leapfrog, it's going to take us 126 years to catch up with the West. All right. 126 years. Uh -huh. So when we are making this debate, what, what I'm worried about is can you find innovation? In, so that we don't wait 126 years. Okay. Because if you do not find that innovative practices, even if you, you have some money sitting there, you're not going to be able to leapfrog. And, okay. and for example, if you look at uh, what, what has happened with Get Fund securitization, where were we going to get $1.5 billion? Yeah. But that $1.5 billion was sitting in Ghana. Mm. It was okay. sitting here. But we were all lamenting about no money, government, where is the money? No money. That's why I'm saying that. Instead of saying we can't fund it, we should rather charge the government and say come, come up, up with innovation way. to do this because it's so important to our fortunes. And okay. how could you have found 1.5 billion? But through get fund securitization, now we have 1.5 billion and we are building schools across the country. Mm -hmm. Now, if we challenge the government that way, Innovation will come. But if we cut a slack for the government 
and say to the government, oh, you don't have the money. How are you going to do this without the money? No, it should be about, is this important to our nation? Mm -hmm. If we don't do this, can we develop? If the answer is no, no, uh, yes, it's important. The answer is no, if we don't, we can't develop. Then we tell the government, whatever you have to do, just do it. find a way to get this done because otherwise uh, the fortunes of this country will not be transformed. And that's the kind of challenge Nana Adankwe Kufuad has taken on. Okay. That in spite of my limited resources, I will find innovative strategies. I'm doing leapfrogging strategies uh, to ensure that I move the country forward in education, something that will have taken 20 years. Look at it this way. 20 years of no fees near high school will mean that about 4 million of our youth wouldn't have me educated. Yeah. So, I've, so access leapfrogging, then we are going to quality leapfrogging. The quality leapfrogging in terms of science, technology, engineering, mathematics yeah, yeah. is where you look at, for example, instead of wet labs in every school, which is difficult to get, why don't you do simulated labs? Why don't you do virtual labs that is now being used in developed countries? Mm. A number of schools in America, for example, they are doing virtual labs, mm -hmm. which means that you don't have to have the wet lab with the water and the sink and everything. Yeah. But you go through simulation. Uh, we just came by in the UK, we went to see the Open University. They are helping us uh, develop lab activities that are conducted virtually. Okay. And, and all these you intend to implement? Yes. In fact, okay. so, uh, some schools some already, already have them. Have it. Okay. Some okay. schools already have it. All right. Now, um, very little time, but let me quickly ask this because this is also um, something that people have been discussing. Now, the free SHS policy, we have two batches. Okay. So one goes in and then the other waits and then they come out and the other goes in. Now, there was supposed to be some uh, vacation classes in between. Did it ever happen? Yes. It happened for the final year students. Okay. Yeah, it happened for them. And, and the thing Where is, was that? You see... Yeah, all, all, you see, for the first time, mm -hmm. during vacation, all students stayed, uh, those who were going to do their wasi, and the government paid for it. Never happened before. Mm. Over the years, what happens is, if you can afford to pay, you pay and you stay, and teachers help you. It's called long vacation classes. You know, that intervention time, that's what happens. But the minister made a, a very important determination this time, that if we want our students to do what, there should be a need for intervention grant to be dispersed to the schools. So part of that money was used in supporting the final year students. And every student who, you, you heard about yeah. the 65 percent pass in mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. This, this year was one of our best years in WASI mm. because some interventions were made. And, and the most important one was not just the before school and after school classes that were paid for by the government, but the fact that the students stayed at school and the government fully picked up the cost of feeding. And in addition to that, create um, a stipend for the teachers who were teaching them. For the first time in the history but of But even this with the feeding and all mm -hmm. that, there were still some issues that uh, plagued it. But, but my director is counting <laughs> down on me. I won't have much time. But way forward, sustainability of free SHS. I know this is supposed to last, what, about seven years? No, no, it's the gone. double track. Oh, we, the yeah, double track. Yeah. So, so when you talk about that double, double track, track element... Seven years. Yeah, that is why construction is under, uh, okay. undertaken across all the schools now. And we, you believe that by that time we would course, have had enough of to accommodate of the numbers? It will be. I think there's a conversation we have to continue another time. Definitely. Because we, there's so much to talk about. There is. We have 800 classroom blocks and dumps under construction now mm. through the Get Fund Securitization of 1.5 billion. So, yes, the president not, did not just say it internally, five to seven years, but he also sat down with his team and cabinet and came up with an approach to get it eliminated through Get Fund Securitization. Mm. 1.5 billion fund in a developing country to embark on a major national agenda. When I was in UK, they were amazed to hear it. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, my time is up, but um, we're looking forward to hearing more from our Deputy Minister. Hopefully, we'll have you back on the show uh, to talk a bit more Anytime. about that as well. Anytime, let me know. But now the CSSPS crisis has been resolved completely? We have placed over 90% according to uh, GES, okay. and they continue to resolve the challenges that individuals have. All right. Have. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Yao Ose Edichum, he's a Deputy Minister of Education, also the MP uh, for Busum Tree Constituency in the Ashanti region. It's still a new day. Thank you very much, boss. Thank you. All Thank right. You. And I hope that we've answered some of your questions. If you still have more, just send them via social media. We'll find a way to channel it, um, you know, through the ministry and get you your answers. Well,